afternoon. So last few classes we have been doing a couple of questions on computation of capital gain, especially for financial assets. And this is this chart that gives you the complete overview. And this is the chart which is quite useful for you to compute capital gains. This chart tells us about how do we classify financial assets and how do we go about the procedure for computing capital gains depending on what kind of financial asset is. So financial assets are broadly classified into two types. You have listed securities. So these are financial assets which are publicly traded in all the recognized stock exchanges. On the other hand, unlisted securities are not available for trading on any of the stock exchanges. So they are privately traded with the shareholders. So in listed securities, when we say securities, securities comprises of various types of financial instruments, which includes debentures, shares, bonds, mutual funds, or a combination of this. So in case of listed securities, the holding period is 12 months. If the financial asset listed is bought and sold within 12 months or up to 12 months, it will be treated as short term capital asset. And if it is held for more than 12 months, it will be treated as long term capital asset. So for both short term and long term capital asset, there is no benefit of indexing. So bottom line listed securities do not enjoy the benefit of indexing. So that's something which you have to keep in mind that listed securities do not have any kind of listing benefit uh, or indexation benefit. Listed securities do not have indexation benefits. On the other hand, unlisted securities. Again, here there is a subdivision in case of equity. It is 24 months in case of debt securities. It is 36 months. And as far as unlisted securities are concerned, the benefit of indexation is available only in case of shares and equity and debt mutual fund. Except this again, the listing, uh, sorry, the indexation benefit is not applicable. So we have already done a couple of questions on this concept. And one more point which uh, you have to remember is pertaining to the valuation of bonus shares. So let me recall the provisions quickly. In case of bonus shares, what happens? Bonus shares are given free. So something which is given free will not have any kind of cost. But when you sell bonus shares, obviously you have not paid for it. You got it free. So how do we value the cost of bonus shares? So the answer to this question is if the bonus shares are issued, on or before 1st April 2001, then the value of bonus share will be as per the fair market value. But in case if the bonus shares are issued after 1st April 2001, then the value of bonus share shall be zero or nil. So in today's class, we'll have a little more comprehensive question which comprises of a couple of financial assets and also. Right, you also have some other assets also being included in this. So let's uh, solve this question. So you have. Shares both listed and unlisted. You have urban agriculture land and you also have rural agriculture land. Then you have gold ornaments, then you have debentures. So in case if you are well versed with the theory and definitions, what we had discussed, I mean, you shouldn't be having any sorts of trouble in classifying these as capital assets and non capital assets. But in case if you are still struggling with the theory concepts, then you will continue to have this problem even during the examination. So therefore it becomes important that you people familiarize yourself with the theory concepts which we have discussed in detail and time and again we keep uh, recollecting and uh, repeating the same stuff. So ensure that you know what exactly capital asset means. So capital asset is defined uh, under section 2 subsection 14 of Income Tax Act. And as per this uh, definition, what constitutes a capital asset? So capital asset can be property of any kind. Capital asset can be property of any kind. 
but capital asset can't be certain things, which is what you guys have to remember. So capital asset can't be stock in trade. Capital asset can't be personal belongings. However, there are four exceptions. Capital asset can't be a rural agriculture land. And that's what we have in this question. We have an item which says rural agriculture land. So rural agriculture land can't be a capital asset. And fourth item which can't be a capital asset is your certain specified bonds. So there is one particular asset here, rural agriculture land, for which no calculation is required. All you have to just is make a note that rural agriculture land is not a capital asset. That's it. So you have to just write a note. Now what about other assets? So we have shares, which is a capital asset. It's a financial asset. We have urban agriculture land. Urban agriculture land is also a capital asset, right? But under uh, what category does it falls? It falls under appreciating assets and under appreciating assets. What category does it falls? Immovable property because in appreciating assets also you have two categories, movable property and immovable property. So again, that is something which you people have to remember, right? Because I had given you uh, a detailed analysis as to how do we go about classifying the capital asset and what's the purpose? What's the reason behind classifying the capital asset, right? So let me quickly uh, show you the chart what we had uh, discussed way back when we uh, started this chapter. So this is the uh, classification what you guys have to remember. So this is the classification of different types of assets, even though officially income tax department does not classify a capital as asset under these four categories. There is officially no classification as what you see in this chart, but I have done it so that you understand and remember the concepts much better. So appreciating a set. So here we have land which is urban agriculture land, which is an uh, appreciating asset. So land is again an immovable property as you're aware. And for immovable property, the holding period is 24 months. So if it is more than 24 months, it is long term capital asset. And for long term capital asset, we should do indexation, right? Now next comes your gold ornaments. So gold ornaments is also an appreciating asset, but gold ornaments is movable property. So the holding period will be 36 months. And then finally we have debentures and these are non listed debentures securities which are non listed, which are right. Uh, not available for trading in the stock exchanges. So the holding period is 12 months less than 12 or up to 12 short term more than 12 long term. Right, and here in this case of listed securities, the benefit of indexation is not available. So the moment you see uh, the question, you should, as I mentioned, follow the steps what we have discussed. First step is to immediately identify whether the asset stated in the question is a capital asset or not. Second step, the moment you confirm it is a capital asset, is to further classify whether it is an appreciating, depreciating, financial or intangible asset. Third step is to determine the holding period. And fourth step is to identify whether you should do indexation or you should not do indexation. So if you're familiar with these four basic steps, computation is a very simple procedure, right? So let's uh, start computing the capital gain. So computation of Will capital gain of Mr. Whatever the name of the SEC is. The assessment year 2020-21. Writing this opening statement is a inseparable part of the solution. So ensure that you write this in the examination without fail. And then let's do a common table. It will save your time even during the examination, but if you want to do it separately, the choice is yours. You can also do it separately, so there's no compulsion that you should do a common table. Some people do get confused, so if you do not have any confusion, then go for the common table. 
So we have a lot of assets in this question of which one is not a capital asset and that's your uh, rural agriculture land. So remaining assets we will write down. So first in the list is shares. And then again we have shares, but these are not listed or unlisted. And third one is urban agricultural land. Fourth one is gold ornaments. We have one more asset. which is your debentures and debentures are also not listed. So we'll write it down, debentures. Unlisted. I'll probably use the abbreviation which is given in the question. Unlisted. Follow the basic protocol now. Let's follow the procedure. First, write down the sale consideration. Nothing but the amount realized from the sale of capital asset. So sale consideration amount is given here. In case of listed shares, the amount is 9 lakh. 55,000. Next, you have the non listed shares. And for non listed shares, the sale consideration is 80,000. Urban agriculture land, 8,7,000 is the sale consideration. Gold ornaments, it just says not applicable, so we have to find out why it is not applicable. For debentures, it is 52,500. Okay, so let's uh, figure out why there is no sale consideration for gold ornaments, why it's not given. Okay, as per the question, on 31st March, the SSE started his own jewelry store and therefore converted the gold ornaments into stock in trade. Now, what do you mean by this? This is something new which we are doing. So you people have to pay attention and remember how do we treat such transaction? Now, let me quickly uh, share with you the definition of transfer. What do you mean by transfer as per income tax act this is something which we have already discussed so what is the definition of transfer as per section 2 subsection 47 so when you look at the definition of transfer it says transfer includes sale and that's what we have been doing in most of the problems transfer also includes exchange but the exchange, both the items should be capital assets. Relinquishment of an asset. Relinquishment is nothing but amount realized from sale of abandoned property, which nobody is claiming the ownership. Extinguishment of asset is when you lose your right to an asset on account of default or non-payment. Third is compulsory acquisition by the government, even though you're not interested to sell, but government wants your property at any cost. And then the last one is something which we actually have in this question. Conversion of an asset into stock in trade. So this is also a form of transfer. So now we will understand how does this exactly works? What do you mean by conversion of an asset, capital asset into stock in trade? Now let's assume, right? 
in my family, let's say there's a tradition that whenever we have any kind of celebration, any kind of uh, event, uh, right? Gifting plays an important role, so we do share gifts. And let's assume that there is somebody, Mr. X, right? Now this guy, Mr. X, he has a lot of jewelry. He has a lot of jewelry, which he has received in the form of gifts. Some part of jewelry he has inherited from his parents. So there's plenty of jewelry, right? He already has somewhere around uh, in terms of grams. Let's say he has 250 grams of jewels, right? And these jewels are in various forms. Some are in the form of uh, earrings, right? Some are gold chains, some is necklace, right? So all sorts of collection is there which all this while he's using and his family members are using it. So this is going on. But what happens is in the year 2021, he decides to open a jewel store. He decides to open a jewel store. Now, in order to open this jewel store, of course you need to have uh, goods, right? Or you can say inventory, which he will buy from, of course, various sources from wholesalers. Then he will right make jewelry, add making charges, wastage, and all. Then he will sell it to the customer. So this is what is generally done. But what he is planning is, he is also planning to use this 250 grams of his jewelry in the shop itself. So he wants to use this 250 gram of jewelry, his personal jewelry. He want to sell this personal jewelry in a shop. So what is the consequence of such transaction? In other words, it actually means that he wants to convert his jewelry into stocking trade. He wants to convert his personal jewelry into stocking trade. So the question is, he wants to convert his personal jewelry into stocking trade. OK, so is personal jewelry a capital asset or not? The answer is even though jewelry is personal and personal belongings are not considered as capital assets, but you guys are aware that there are four exceptions. One of the exception is jewelry, even though jewelry is a personal belonging, but still jewelry is a capital asset. So what this guy wants to do is he wants to convert his personal belonging, that is jewelry, which is also a capital asset into goods. So in this transaction, in, in a transaction like this, how do we compute capital gain? How do we compute capital gain? So the answer to this question is simple. OK, so he is transferring. This capital asset. Right, so he is transferring his capital asset into stock in trade. So on the date of transfer. We have to do valuation. Now, how do we do valuation? Right? Let me give you a simple example. If I am transferring my personal jewelry into my shop, in the books of accounts of my shop, I have to register the cost price of the jewelry. If I am buying the same jewelry from a wholesaler, right, I pay him. So there is a cost. But this in this example, it's my own jewelry, so I am right. There's technically speaking, there's no cost as such because some of the jewelry, maybe I would have purchased this in the past. Some of the jewelry I got it from my friends, my relatives, my parents as gift. Some I inherited it. So in my books of accounts, in my business, what will be the cost price of this jewelry? That's the question I wanted to ask you. So what will be the cost price of jewelry? What will be 
the cost price of jewelry or jewels in the books of accounts of business so the answer to this question is the cost will be the fair market value simple fair market value will be considered as the cost and the fair market value itself will be considered as sale consideration so that's how we do the valuation of a capital asset which is converted into a stock in trade right so that's a simple uh right concept which you have to remember now what happens here is let us see this example now gold ornaments gold ornaments the cost which his parents paid or he would have paid way back in the year 2011 and 12 is 20 lakhs okay so we do have a cost here what we don't have is the sale consideration right so what would be the sale consideration the sale consideration in case of conversion of a capital asset into stock in trade will be the fair market value as on the date of conversion so that's the rule which you people have to remember so how do we value how do we identify the sale consideration of a capital asset which is converted into stock in trade the answer is the fair uh, the sale consideration of a capital asset which is converted into stock in trade will be the fair market value as on the date of conversion right so that's what you people have to remember you should know how do we treat how do we identify the sale consideration so that is the answer the sale consideration is nothing but the fair market value as on the date of conversion so if the stock in trade is converted if capital asset is converted into stock in trade if capital asset is converted into stock into goods or stock or inventory value of sale consideration would be the fair market value as on the date of its conversion right so this is what you guys have to remember now what will happen here is simple i'll just so in my books of account in my books business in my business books what will happen is what will be the cost of this jewelry the cost of this jewels will be fair market value as on date of conversion but we are not bothered about this because here you are not been asked to calculate income from business right here you are been asked to find out what is the capital gain arising from conversion of jewelry into stock in trade but anyways for your understanding i've just mentioned this point so this is how we should treat it okay so here now the question is what is the sale consideration of gold ornaments technically speaking he did not sell gold ornaments he has converted his gold ornaments into stock in trade of his business so in such scenario what is the rule 
the sale consideration in case of conversion of a stock in trade conversion of a capital asset into stock in trade shall be the fair market value of the capital asset as on the date of conversion so what is the fair market value of the capital asset as on the date of conversion it is given in the question it is 45 lakhs so this 45 lakhs will be considered as sale consideration simple right so do remember this important point now other things you guys are very familiar with less transfer expenses so transfer expenses are given here in the question so shares it is 5000 and 1000 urban land it is 7000 for conversion there is no expense so we'll write in for debentures the transfer expenses 500 rupees so will become your net sale consideration so known as ns Thousand seventy nine thousand eight lakh, and here it is forty five lakhs, and here it is so next step less the index cost of acquisition or. for some assets there is no indexing so we take only cost of acquisition now shares which are listed for shares which are listed there is no benefit of indexation so here is a note the benefit of indexation is not available in case of financial asset except for these two right so this unlisted shares do not qualify for any kind of indexation benefit and therefore we should take cost of acquisition So, what is the cost of acquisition? The cost of acquisition of unlisted shares is fifty thousand. And is it long term or short term? Year of purchase is two thousand eighteen nineteen, and year of sale is two thousand nineteen twenty. So, technically speaking, it is exactly twelve months. So, twelve months is also short term only. So, more than twelve months is long term. So, this is held for twelve months. So, this is a short term. capital asset right and any which ways whether it is short term or long term for listed shares there is no indexation benefit then why do we do short term and long term because short term and long term classification has two reasons one reason number one is to figure out whether indexation is available or not reason number two is capital gain tax is different for short term and long term so still we should do that classification of short term and long term next is a uh, non listed shares so non listed shares you guys are aware that we should do indexation since it's held for more than 24 months as you can see here it is purchased in the year 1999-20 and it's sold in the year 2019-20 so obviously the holding period is more than 24 months so for more than 24 months it becomes long term capital asset and for unlisted share we should do indexation so we should figure out what is the index cost of acquisition so we will write here second note i c o a for unlisted shares and by now you should be aware which formula to be used for indexation because you know there are two formulas formula number 1 or equation number 1 is used when the assets are bought on or before 1st april 2001 and formula or equation 2 is used if the assets are purchased after 1st april 2001 
So therefore you should be familiar by now which formula to be used. So we have to use equation number two, which is cost of acquisition divided by CII of the acquisition year. Multiplied by CI of the previous year. OK, so this is the equation what we would be. So what is the cost of acquisition of shares? 70,000 rupees. And when it is purchased, oh, it's purchased in 1999 20. So that means we have to use the other equation, not this one, the first one in which we do a comparison. So that equation needs to be. So what we had done earlier was correct. So let's use this. A will be cost of acquisition, which is seventy thousand. It's given here. Or the fair market value, which is eighty thousand. Take whichever is higher and the rest is dividing it by 100 and multiplying it with the CIA of the previous year, which is given here in the question 89. So 70,000 or 80,000, whichever is higher. So we should take 80,000. So 80,000 divided by 100 into. So you get 2,31,200. So 2,31,200 is the index cost of acquisition of the unlisted shares. Which we will write it here. Next comes your urban agriculture land. So urban agriculture land is bought in the year 2002 and 3 and it is sold in the year 2019-20. So urban agriculture land is an appreciating asset. It is an immovable asset. The holding period is 24 months and it is held for more than 24 months. Therefore, it is a long term capital asset and long term capital assets. We have to do the indexation. We have to use formula number two because this is acquired after 1st April 2001. Let's do that. ICOA. Agriculture land. So cost of acquisition divided by CII of the acquisition year. by as we multiplied with the CIA of the previous year. ICOA will be cost of acquisition of the urban land and it is 50,000. CII of the acquisition year. Divide this by the CII of the acquisition year. So let's 
of the CIA of the acquisition year. So this is acquired in the year 2023 and the CII is 105. CII of the previous year, which is 289. So let's simplify this now. 50, divided by 105 into 289. So you get 1 lakh 37,609. So what's next? Next we have gold ornaments. Gold ornaments is an appreciating asset. Under appreciating asset, it is a movable property and for movable property, the holding period is 36 months. So is this short term or long term? It's bought in the year 11, 12 and sold in the year 1920. It is held for more than 36 months and therefore it is a long term capital asset and we must do indexation. So index cost of acquisition, COA, and this is for your gold ornaments. So we use the same equation which we have used for because this is also bought after 1st April 2001. So the cost here is 20 lakhs. Twenty lakhs. CII of the acquisition year 2011-12. The CII is 184. So this will be 184 into CIA of the previous year, which is 289. So 20 lakhs divided by 184 into 289. You get. 31 lakh 41,304 so <clears throat> let's write down the cost now in the table this is the cost of urban agriculture land this is the cost of gold ornaments. Now this is the the cost of unlisted debentures. So unlisted debentures, even though they are long term, if you can see here 2013-14 and it is sold in the year 2019-20. So the holding period is obviously more than 12 months. But in case of <clears throat> non listed, it is 36 months. So 36 months is the holding period. So should we do indexing or not? The answer is indexing is available only for unlisted shares, equity and debt, mutual funds. So this does not qualifies for indexation benefit and therefore directly take the cost of acquisition, which is 50,000 rupees. Let's find out the gain or loss now. Gross capital gain is 9 lakhs. Shares, the net sale consideration is 79,000. I think we have written it wrong. Okay. Listed it is. Oh, we have done the reverse thing. Non listed it is. We have fixed the values. Okay, so we'll just reverse this. 
Okay, so listed shares are 80,000. 1,000 is the transfer expense. And listed shares, the cost is 50,000. So, 29,000 is the gross capital. Next, unlisted or non listed shares 9,50,000 minus 2,31,200. So you get 17,18,800 as the capital gain. And then you have the admin agriculture land. So 8 lakh minus 1 lakh 37 619. So you get 6 lakh 62,381 as capital gain. Next we have the gold ornaments. So gold ornaments were converted from capital asset to stock in trade. And when it is done, we will not have any sale consideration because technically you have not sold it to anybody. You're using your own personal asset as a stock in your business. So in that case, sale consideration will not be there. So the answer is in such a scenario where capital asset is converted into stock in trade, the sale consideration will be the fair market value as on the date of conversion. So as per the question, the sale, the fair market value of gold ornaments as on the date of conversion was 45 lakh. So therefore the sale consideration will become 45 lakhs. And from the viewpoint of business, the cost of gold, what you have acquired. Right from yourself will become 45 lakhs. OK, so 45 lakhs is the sale consideration. Minus. The index cost of acquisition, which is 31 lakh 41,304. So the profit will be or the gain will be 13 lakhs 58,696. And here it will be 2000. So as far as the deductions are concerned, we have not done it. Probably we'll start very soon. So till then we'll just write nil or not applicable, whatever. Taxable capital gain will be same as gross capital gain. So we'll write the same amounts. What we have to also do is we have to write down whether it is short term or long term. So what that we will do here at the end. So this is long term. Is it long term? Let's quickly check. Listed shares here. Yep, it is short term capital gain. Bought in 1819, sold in 1920. So short term capital gain, long term capital gain, long term capital gain, long term capital gain, and debentures are also long term capital gain. So this is your final answer. Right, so we will go for some doubt clarification now. If you guys have any questions, any doubts on what we have done, please go ahead and clarify your doubts. I'll quickly uh, unmute you people. So if you have any questions on the present illustration or any other question from the past illustrations, you can go ahead and ask. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead, please. Uh, sir, debentures. Uh, yeah. Can you explain uh, how did we get 50,000 so debentures? Okay, debentures. 
So first we have noted down the uh, sale consideration, sale price mentioned here 52,500. From that we have deducted the selling expenses, which is 500. So the net sale consideration is 52,000. So from net sale consideration, we should deduct the cost. How do we find out profit? Sale minus cost price is profit. So same logic we apply here. This is our selling price, net selling price. So what is the cost? So cost is given here in the question itself. This is the column that has all the costs, right? What is the cost of acquisition of debentures? Debentures were purchased at 50,000 rupees. So 50,000 is the cost. So 52 minus 50,000, you get 2,000 profit. So the SSE has made a gain of 2,000 on debentures. So we got the cost from the question. Here it is. But all you have to learn is when to take just the cost and when you take index cost. So that is something which you should remember. Otherwise, the data is given in the question. We can't frame cost on our own, right? So cost data will be given in the question itself. Thank you, sir. Anybody else who has any doubts? No one? Can you show us the CICOA calculation, sir? ICOA for which asset? Uh, I just wanted to see the calculation, sir. Oh, you want to see the calculation? Okay. Yeah. So this is the ICOA calculation for three assets. Okay, sir. So unlisted or non-listed, anyways, both are same. Other assets do not qualify for indexation, so we have not done. Listed shares and non-listed debentures, both do not qualify for indexation, so we have not taken indexation. We have just taken the cost of acquisition. Uh, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, go on. Uh, uh, when do we get ICOA and CO, uh, COA, sir? We take ICOA for long term capital assets. Okay. And we take COA for short term capital assets. Okay, sir. And for depreciating assets, we take written down value. Okay, sir. That's the general rule. However, when it comes to financial assets, you have to be a little careful. Why is that? Because for financial assets, indexation benefit is available only for these two items, unlisted shares, equity and debt mutual funds. Even though other might be long term capital gain, for them also indexation is not available. For example, in this question, if you see, Debenture is actually a long term capital asset because debenture was bought in 1314 and it was sold in 1920. So holding period for non listed debenture is 36 months. So this is more than 36 months. Then why we have not done indexing? We have just taken the cost. The reason is because for shares or for capital uh, for financial assets, the benefit of indexation is available only for two. One is unlisted share. The second one is equity and debt mutual funds. Otherwise, the general rule is that all long term capital assets do qualify for indexation. Short term capital assets do not qualify for indexation and therefore we take only the cost of acquisition and for depreciating assets we have to take written down value. Are you are you clear now for what for which asset to take? Yes, uh, sir. Right, so. Yes. OK. Any other doubts, questions?